Okay guys, welcome back. Now this is a, it's going to be a very timely process. I'm making a Maltese cheese called Jubini. I'm hoping I didn't butcher that because my mum is laughs at me every time I say it. Now it's just cow's milk, that's really all it is, or goat's milk. And it has to be fresh, not the long life stuff. And it can't be anything but milk or goat. Um, what it is is two liters of milk, or I'm thinking it's half a gallon. I'm not too sure what that is in America. Um, a cup of full cream milk powder, and this stuff called rennet. Now it's same thing as junction, but junk it, but it's just liquid form. Now, if they ask for two tablets of junction in in your your cheese, add two tables. Add two teaspoons. I've also mixed it with two tablespoons of water. Now what it is is just put the milk and the milk powder into a bowl, slowly bring it up to 98 Fahrenheit, I think it's about 32 or 34 degrees Celsius and add the junction and let it sit there for three hours until it goes all curdy. Now, these are the baskets that I'm going to put in. They're little small things, they'll sit in the fridge, but I'll explain that to you next time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat the milk up. I'm going to whisk in the milk powder and, to the milk and just sit it on the, on the hob on a really low heat. Make sure you've got a very, very good thermometer because if you go over or you go too far under, it won't work. It's virtually like um, the gelatin of the cheese world. Um, use it well and it will work for you. I made these the other week and they turned out fantastic. So today I'm going to make them for you. It takes about seven days, seven to eight days for them to get. Because I'm in a cool climate, well at the moment I am in Australia, it's, the weather's fucking horrible. Um, it's going to take a while for the cheese to dry out. But other than that, I'll be back in, as soon as it hits 98 degrees, I'll show you what happens then. Because all it is is just waiting around. Okay, I'll see you then. So as you can see, it's nearly at temp. It's at 92, 93 degrees. Now just leave it on a, a low, low heat um, until it reaches, you want it about blood level or lukewarm. Now if you make it any hotter or you go too quick, you'll kill the rennet, which is, it won't turn into curd like you want. Now I'm not making um, curds like you put on, 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 um, fries and all that sort of stuff this is this is just going to set to a hard cheese it'll take five or six days after it's in the fridge and all the way is dumped out of it so all it is is it's pretty basic like i've never made it before i found the recipe and and found the uh, the cheese baskets online and it was basic i've never it was pretty so there you go it's 98 degrees i'll turn it off now i'll take everything out I'll grab the rennet and the water, just put it in, get it all out, give it a mix so it all goes through, put a lid on it and let it sit till it gets to room temperature which is about three hours or something like that and I'll come back and I'll show you what I do next because that's when the fun part stuff starts, uh, the messy stuff. So I'll see you in about three hours. Okay, so what I've got is about a very wobbly sort of jelly sort of thing. It's it's all set and all ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and just cut into certain bits. And now I'm going to ladle it into baskets that were on the bench. I'll set this up again. And I'll show you what I do, but it's there's curds and whey, the whey is on the bottom, and I've got to drain that out. Okay, so I've done everything I need to. As you can see, there's little baskets, and I've got the curd all done. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scoop out some and drop it into the basket. You can overflow it because they're going to, they are going to sink a little bit. So, I'm just going to let it sit now, try and not make a mess. I've got a tray underneath to make uh, to catch the water, 
you'll have to at least empty it at least maybe once or twice during the whole time because it will lose a lot of a lot of um a lot of um fluid in there. Just fill it up over the top. You should be right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn I'm gonna set this off. I'm gonna fill up all the baskets and I'll come back when they're done and I'll show you what I've done. Okay guys, this is what they look like when they're finished. These are overflowed now. They will drop at least by half. As you can see, there's a lot of water in the actual tray. Leave these sit for about a good hour outside. Try and empty the tray out with something like I was using a meat probe um, or the meat tenderizer thing that you stick into meat and, and put um, your flavorings in to pull out some of the water. But other than that, these will sit, these will go in the fridge for three days at least um, to drip like this. And then we'll come back after that and I'll show you what we do after that because the, like I said, it's a long process. After that, they'll sit out in my kitchen for about five days under cheesecloth. So that's really it and I'll see you in, a, in about three days. Okay guys, this is just a quick, uh, quick update. This is day two. I've just taken, I've just flipped them over in the moulds as you can see. Everything's actually coming out of them. So I've got about maybe an inch of water in the, or way, sorry, into, in the, uh, the bottom of the bowl in the, in the fridge. These have still got another, maybe another day, two before I start doing anything to them. You want to dry them out as, as much as possible. Just keep them in the fridge and, just yeah keep going you can't really touch them until anything as you can see I'm probably one short because I sort of dropped one on the way outside into the back fridge the dog liked it so it must be good but other than that guys I'll see you tomorrow well I won't see you tomorrow just got to flip them over again and when I come back to the third step I'll show you what I do from there see you guys okay guys it's day three or day four and these are the size that they are. As you can see, they're half the size compared to what they were when they went in. They were full. All I'm going to do is just take them out and put them on some paper just to get them all nice and dry. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get them all out. I'm just going to salt them. Turn them over and salt them again and turn them over and salt them all the way around. Roughly you want about a tablespoon, teaspoon and a half, sorry. So now they feel like a, a really soft custard at the moment. So they're getting they're getting there. Okay, so you don't need a lot of salt. What the salt does is it draws out the moisture. Now, I'm gonna take off all the dry bits that are here um, and just roll it around with the leftovers and put them back in. And that's all it is, just leave it another night and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you what I do after that. And that's the last step, really. And after that, it's just the waiting game. So, I'll see you then. Okay, guys. I'm back. Now, what I'm doing today is, as you can see, they're a quarter of the weight that they are. With Jibane it, um, you pepper them. You can have them like this. You can have them hard without any pepper but the real Maltese way is to have them hard so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it all in pepper and I'm just going to get my board over here and sit it up and just stick it on the board now that's all I'm doing when I come back all it is is just sitting there it's going to sit here for about three or four days in the house I'm going to do them all like this and just leave them sit there. So that's really it. Um, I'll come back tomorrow or the next day and show you how they're going. But as you can see, 
They're very squishy. They're still very squishy. Okay guys, this is what it looks like when they're finished. Now these will sit on the bench for about four to five days, just depends how, how warm it is in my house. At the moment it's pretty cold outside, so we'll see. Now, you just have to cover them with some cheesecloth, which I've got in the corner over there. Um, and just let them sit every day, turn them over to get them, uh, to get them dry evenly, but that's really about it. I'll come back when they're dry or a couple of days and show you how close they are. As you can see, they're pretty spongy. By the time three or four days they come back, it'll be pretty, um, pretty hard. So I'll see you then. Okay, guys, welcome back. This is the final product of this brain knit. As you can see, they're still a bit spongy, but if they go hard, they don't taste too good. As you can see, they lost probably 75% of its weight. Um, I will, I won't be eating them yet. I'm eating them for Mother's Day very soon, but this is the end product. This is what they look like. They taste like creamy pepper. That's the only thing I can suggest what they taste like. They're not salty, very peppery, but they're really nice cheese. So that's it from me. This is the next one. The next one will be pastrami, I think. So I'll see you in a week. See you guys.